These moon-like craters are actually unstable crystals in a complicated molecular material known as chocolate. Understanding how crystals form is key in crafting mouth-watering chocolate that has a vital and often overlooked quality. People like chocolate for, for, for many reasons that, that perhaps they don't really directly um, think about. Um, they think about the taste of chocolate. They think about the sweetness of chocolate. But, but an extremely important property of chocolate is its texture and its property of being hard at room temperature but yet completely melting in your mouth. This melt-in-your-mouth property makes a chocolate bar a unique type of solid. We eat a great many different solids, a bread, pasta. Chocolate is a very interesting kind of solid because it's one of the very few crystalline solids that we eat. Crystalline solids, or crystals, have molecules, atoms, or ions packed together in an orderly pattern and appear to have flat surfaces. The crystal solids we eat are ice, sugar, salt, chocolate, and believe it or not, butter and margarine are all made of crystals. Chocolate and butter and margarine are the fatty crystals that we eat, but yet, as we all know, they have really very different properties. Um, of those three, only chocolate is, is solid at room temperature. So you can pick it up, you can break a piece off of your candy bar, give it to a friend, and you don't have to worry about your fingers getting all greasy. So if you imagine like picking up a pat of butter at room temperature, you can do it, but it's not very pleasant. The formation of the crystal in chocolate is actually um, part of the art of making chocolate. The art of making chocolate into a solid bar that melts in your mouth begins near the equator. There, often in the shade of coconut, plantain, or banana trees, grows a fruit called a cocoa pod. The cocoa beans inside the pod are fermented, often in their own pulp. The local bacteria, fungi, and yeast, part of the fermentation process, give the chocolate unique flavors. Then the beans are dried in the sun, cleaned, and shipped round the world to chocolate makers, like Mast Brothers. The journey from bean to bar begins with roasting the beans, then the age-old process of winnowing, or removing the shell from the cocoa bean. Cocoa beans were winnowed by Mayans thousands of years ago. You know, the beans would have been crushed and then thrown up into the wind, and the wind would blow away the lighter shells. To winnow shells in New York City, the Mast Brothers developed their own technique. Cracking the beans, extracting the, the shell, and then the heavier nib will fall into the pan below. The nibs are ground and made into a chocolate liquor. No alcohol content here, just an old world name for liquid. The cocoa particles become suspended in the cocoa butter fat. The beans themselves are actually made up of about 50% cocoa butter. You know, under the weight of the stones and kind of the friction and the heat will start to melt those, those cocoa nibs uh, pretty quickly. At this point, sugar and other ingredients, such as milk in the case of milk chocolate, are added. The stone grinders conch the chocolate, or mix it to reduce the size of the particles, and release the flavors and acids embedded in the liquor. The process can take several days. We want, like everybody wants, that sexy, velvety texture. You don't want to be sandy. Conching's an important part of flavoring the chocolate, but leaves the cocoa butter unstable. To make the cocoa butter stable, it goes through a tempering process. And tempering is all about crystals. When we put water in the, in the freezer, we don't have to worry about making the right kind of crystalline water if we're making an ice cube. We just put the water in the freezer and wait a certain amount of time and then it crystallizes. Um, but in chocolate, that can't happen because there are actually six different kinds of crystals in chocolate. They have different structures, but also different, importantly, different melting points. Only form five is needed, so chocolate makers slowly heat up the mixture until just below Form 5's melting point, dissolving the unwanted forms of crystals. What's left is smooth chocolate, ready to be molded, unwrapped, snapped, and eaten. This chocolate should have a certain look to it, have, have a gloss and a sheen to it, it needs to have a snap, and it needs to have the right mouthfeel. 
And what you have is a fairly complicated thing. And then when you put it in your mouth and you wait long enough, if you're not impatient, it will melt back to that liquor and release all the flavor.